Hello, everyone. I'm Mickey R. Thomas, licensed associate real estate broker with the Corcoran Group, and welcome back to Shop Talk Park Slope. This time around, we've got none other than one of the co-owners of Whisk and Whiskey on Park <laughs> Slope and Fourth Avenue, near from remembering the cross streets, Carol and Garfield. That yes. is Carol and Garfield. Um, Miss <laughs> Chandra. A touch. <laughs> okay, it's like her her name is so cool. Like, come on. <laughs> and I had to say it with a bit of a bit of pizzazz there. So thank you, Chandra, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I've been excited to really uh, to talk to you for a while. Um, like I said, she's uh, Chandra is one half of the ownership team behind Whisk and Whiskey, the other one being uh, Sequoia uh, Brown. And uh, we couldn't get Sequoia this evening, but that's okay because Chandra is amazing and she's going to talk to us about whiskey and whiskey. So speaking of which, for anybody who has not had a chance to go yet, what is whiskey and whiskey? Well, whiskey and whiskey, we're a casual bar bakery. Um, we, off, we offer, you know, um, pastries, light bites, coffee, cookies, cakes, and cocktails. That's our concept is just something that's very new and different. Um, it's, you know, it's a place for everybody. You know, you can go there anytime and you can have coffee at any time of the day, cocktail at any time of the day, or just, you know, sit back, relax, and just, you know, um, work from home during the morning and have a birthday party at night. It's just a place, a big living room for everybody. So, oh, yeah. Oh, interesting that you say a living room for everybody. Yeah, because actually, because actually yeah. now that I think about it, the times like when I've come in and out, it kind it, it kind of does actually have that vibe. Like even down yeah. to and everything. I'm like, yeah, this actually is somebody's like really cute living room. Or also the outdoor spaces, you do have like that nice little 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 backyard going. And of course, any yeah. kind of outdoor space is a premium. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. It's pet friendly. So we have a separate VIP entrance for the dogs because you know you can't really have dogs inside, which I wish I could because yeah. I would have dogs every day um but we have a little separate vip entrance where the dogs can enter to go to the backyard oh that's cool actually because i've i've seen like on instagram i've seen people like have their pets and everything else but it didn't occur to me that's like right they can't actually walk through the restaurants and that's actually really thoughtful because you know our neighborhood is very very pet friendly we have lots of four-legged friends (laughs) all throughout the neighborhood so I love. Um, so yeah, so so your restaurant really has like, you know, a couple of fun mashups going on. And you kind of already mm-hmm. touched on one of them, which is baked goods and drink. Yeah. So yeah. how did you, what was like kind of like the inspiration for you two to decide that that was going to be like one of your main things? I mean, at the time, um, Chef Koi actually had her own uh, bakery business. Um, she was also in real estate as well. But um, oh, I, I yeah, that. she yeah, she was in the real estate. Yeah, she's she was killing it. Um, she had her own um, like like her own side business where she would bake delicious cakes, mm-hmm. delicious desserts, and it was just like during the pandemic, we just you know bunkered up, made food, made cocktails, and just had a good old time because you know we all thought the world was gonna end. So <laughs> yeah, so that concept just came about because we realized hanging out, having conversations, you know. I've been immersed in the Caribbean culture very luckily enough at a young age because my best friend was from Jamaica. So I would go to Jamaica and like, you know, I would, you know, be staying there for winter breaks with her and just eating different foods, but then realizing that there's a lot of similarities with like Caribbean food and Southeast Asian food. You know, we have similar Mm -hmm. spices things and Chef Koi is from Trinidad. So, you know, not too far, like a lot of things kind of like come together and, familiarity of flavors came together and we're just like what's so crazy like you know it's two parts of the world and here we are and we both like you know like have used the same ingredients almost you know so it was like a bit a bit of a mashup and and to pay honor to like our respective like you know ancestors and like being able to share our culture together in a way that it's like melds together in a way of like a a bigger picture of the world I guess I'm just saying yeah, because one of the things that you folks offer, and shame on me that I have not tried it yet, because listen, I walk into the shop and you all just distract me with all the baked <laughs> goods in the front. So I'm just like, cake, cake, cookie, cookie, cake, cake. <laughs> you know, so I get distracted. 
<laughs> and then you see the bar and everything else. But you folks do offer uh, what I've heard are amazing bakes, which yes. are Trinidadian in origin, but have yep. like you. But again, like you're talking about that mashup of flavors, you you, yep. you sprinkled in a bit of Cambodian, uh, you know, influence there. Yeah, the, so a bake is a classic, uh, classic Trinidadian bread. It's like warm and fluffy. It's kind of like an arepa meets like a fried dough. Um, so it's a, a fried bread that um, has stuffings and fillings in it. So we take in like, you know, our Trinidadian, Cambodian, Brooklyn culture, kind of like put our, put the flavors together and just, you know, really showcase something that is a, a, a staple of Trinidad, but how it can, you know, fuse into different fillings and ways of like, you know, eating it, right? So, yeah, they're really delicious. I have to like stop eating them. <laughs> or do you? <laughs> you're right. I know. I mean, exactly. <laughs> it's like also. I mean, tactically, even though you're not making them at home, I mean, it's because you're making them. It's like it's not the same as eating like takeout because you know you made it in your restaurant. So I think I think what counts is like almost homemade so there <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> i got your justification there all right so <laughs> so how did you two land on being in park slope was were you originally targeting the neighborhood or was it the case that kind of like the right spot opened up for you at the right time it was the right spot right time it was kind of like taking a chance on uh, an idea but with the right space and the right timing it, it had happened it was just like it's like go big or go home you know so mm-hmm. right space yeah that was for sure uh, but park slope to me i've been in and out of park slope since like 2008 so oh, okay. i yeah like i i you know like ran out of college i was like hanging out at high dive you know hanging out like you know all those bars that all the kids go to you know back in the day um Mission Dolores, you know, like all those places. So I'm very right. Slope. Yeah. And we wanted to just bring something different, you know, because it's like the diversity of restaurants in Park Slope itself is huge, but there's like staples, right? Staples. And we want to be part of that community of the staples. And the people, Park Slope is a destination, you know, like Fifth Ave is like where all the bars and restaurants are. And I know my friends and I used to go to brunch, you know, and I would be coming from different parts of, you know, people are becoming from different parts of Brooklyn or different parts of Jersey just to go to Park Slope, you know? So it was, and it was the right time. And plus the Barclay Center is right there. You know, there's a lot of, it was the right time, right space. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just the idea of your, especially kind of going back to like the baked goods plus drinks. And it's like, you would think given how much New Yorkers love drinks, and love the goods <laughs> that we would see more of this kind of combination, but we really don't, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Th- so that's why when I heard, uh, when I first heard about you folks coming, I'm like, oh, no, this is ingenious. They're going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. No, I was definitely, thank you. I appreciate the, I t- appreciate the compliment a lot. Thank you. Yeah. It's just something different. It's like, I'm very passionate. I love to entertain. I love, you know, I've always been the person that like had the Super Bowl parties, had big birthday parties, had parties for no reason parties, you know, and it's, it's just life. like, have yeah. a party for life. <laughs> well, Cambodians, we love to party. So <laughs> like when I was in, just really off topic, when I was in Cambodia visiting my family, my aunts who were like in their fifties, they're like, we're going to the disco. I'm like, it's 1am. And they're like, yeah, that's what time we go. And I'm like, okay. You know, so Additionally, the Cambodian culture, we just love to celebrate life, um, you know, so I can speak on that, like, just having the passion to entertain and, you know, be, like, back in the day when I was bartending, like, I would be that bartender that would, someone would order mojito at, like, midnight and I would make it where other bartenders would refuse, but I was like, no, I want people to come out, have a good time, get what they want, you know, people work hard and they want to, you know, enjoy themselves, so I was always willing to take that extra step because it was never it was never a bother for me I always want people to enjoy themselves so that's really important yeah yeah and I feel like people do that like in your six is one of the things I think that we were actually talking about uh pre-interview was how the restaurant kind of feels like a living room you know it's like you go in and it's just got like that that pretty cozy kind of feel to it 
Uh, where it's like you come in, you're like, yeah, I I can stay here for a bit (laughs) and chill. Yeah, Yeah, I can totally do that. So that's like, it's it's like a nice aesthetic, but uh, kind of rolling it back to kind of like in terms of when you folks first opened up, because I think it's been like, has it been, has it been, it's been a full year, maybe even a little over a year year and a half. Year and a half. Yes, I knew it was because I remember your anniversary uh, party that you hosted. Um, So a year and a half. So that means you opened up right in the thick of the pandemic. So (laughs) yes, for you, how was it for you for you to navigate all of that? It was really tough. Um, At that time, I was doing event sales. um, So I was basically have like a whole bunch of like weddings and corporate events and all these events that just had to be stalled. And Mm -hmm. at the time in transition to opening the bar, I was still working doing events. Didn't really take a break. Like literally I think I worked up to the week before we opened, you know? Um, And it was, we're talking about like trying to have, trying to have to rescale um, people's events due to the, all of the protocols. Mm -hmm. It was difficult for me. It was like, it's like you think about this, you know, when someone, when you get invited to someone's home, you're in someone's home, right? And being entertained and stuff like that. So I had to kind of shift my mindset and be like, hey, this is my house. Like, hey, these are the rules that I didn't make, but they exist. And I think it was really hard just to navigate. I think it was hard to more navigate the protocols than anything. And then just like, you know, when people were coming back out, there was a lot of like hesitation of like this, you know, people had to be six feet apart or, you know, all these things that were like, played a part in operations, you know, um, but I think we, with, with our community and with the people that supported us, it made it a lot more easier. Like people who didn't, who didn't want to follow all the protocols, they walked in and they left, you know, people who did felt safe. And we, we wanted to be like a place for everybody to enjoy themselves in a safe environment, you know, health wise, everything, you know, so it was really, it was difficult to navigate because, you know, we had to be, I, I hate to say this, but we had to be like the we like not police, but we had to police people with their vaccine cards. So it was like really like all those little things was really difficult. I would say that was the just the the protocols in place, you know, trying to keep everybody happy and trying to like make sure that everybody felt, you know, that they could be invited, you know, like because I didn't want to, you know, we have to follow protocols. There was mandatory protocols. So there's people, you know, who didn't want to dine in, but they had to dine outside. And it was just like a lot of those things and having conversations, but also being aware of like, you know, like, unfortunately, if we didn't follow the rules, there's consequences, you know? So that was just really hard to navigate, I have to say. Yeah. But, I, think, I think that the way that your business is, is set up though, I think that you kind of, that, you know, you, you, you were able to really offer that. Cause I know, you know, for me, from a perspective of someone who doesn't really do indoor dining at the moment, you know, Mm -hmm. you guys do have your backyard, you know, and also the, as I was talking about the cake (laughs) display at the front, someone like me, I can still pop in, get myself Mm -hmm. some cake, get myself some cookies, get myself whatever little treat you might have and stuff. And now I think that, wait, are they actually allowing to go drinks? Cause I need to get on that if they (laughs) They are. But see, that's not a problem because, like I said, I like your sweet. <laughs> yeah. You got to come in for a cocktail and then we grab it for to go. I definitely got one of mine. Yeah. So that was, so I think that, so I think that it, it, as difficult as that was, if it seems like you were successful at actually making those offerings. Well, and not only that, but I think that probably the people who were, because you had to open at a time where all of these, you know, protocols were in place that the people who are your fans, your supporters, they really truly are your fans and supporters. Yeah. They found different ways of like, oh, I'm going to come in and do this, or I'm going to come in and do this and, da, 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 and everything yeah. else. So, so yeah. I think that, so it sounds like uh, even though it was really difficult to navigate, you ended up building like a really solid fan base. Yes. Uh, hopefully, 
is the is, is has has given you a foundation which I hope will continue for many years to come. Uh, for it is. Because I think that you're a great addition. Actually, speaking of the Park Slope community and just kind of like you know to kind of uh, wrap up the interview and stuff. So I would say, what are some of the things that you've enjoyed about being part of the Park Slope community? And also, what are some of your personal favorite spots in the neighborhood? Of course, of course, yeah. I mean, I love seeing in a year and a half because we're you know all the kids come in with their parents and grab cookies and things but I really love seeing like the the kids like develop like you know like personalities you know Mm -hmm. so we'll have like kids that come in and they know exactly what they want and then they come in and they're just very confident like it's we just I just love seeing that growth Mm -hmm. and you know I seeing parents like kind of like teach children the interaction of responsibility of like you know cash transaction or car transaction I think it's so cute um that's like my favorite you know and we built a community space for everybody I mean like Chef Boy and I are people who are just we love people and we love to be we love to learn about the other people and like what you know enlightens people and what inspires what's passion you know so it's like we created this community space where like a lot of people just come in and we'd be just automatically friends you know we're very like because we're very we're casual casual contemporary contemporary I would say you know casual contemporary bar bakery and it's just like everybody that walks in we we want you to feel like you're at home and we have made those friendships and we have made that within our community we have regulars that come in and know exactly what they want or you know we have regulars that come in and then we just talk about life and we just talk about catch up as if we're like been long time friends you know so it's I really love the community that we have and then you know it's it's like we have this one family and everybody gets birthday cakes from us like there's like three kids and you know cakes from us so it's just like building that community is really big for me you know um, I, I you know my family doesn't live in um new york they all live in philadelphia and maine so it's like building a home away from home is also like a big thing for me so i, I feel that our our fan base and our regulars and the people that like you know, enjoy coming to Whiskey and Whiskey, feel that, you know, and feel the same way that we do. So, yeah. That's great. And just to follow up on it, because I think, because I hit you with like a double question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, basically, what are some of your favorite um, shops, bars, restaurants and stuff in parks? Oh my God. Stuff? Like, what do you like? What do you really like going to? Oh man. Well, I mean, Gowanus Garden is right there, you know, hands down. I just love eating. Like they have these, uh, pepperoncini bites i love their grilled cheese tomato soup like and when i close up and if i'm hungry i'll go there because they have a late night kitchen so guanas gardens has fed me a lot um (laughs) (laughs) uh, definitely shout outs to rice and beans i I love them oh yeah yeah i love rice and beans um definitely nini is a new new taco spot that i'm really a big fan of um they're like yeah yeah further down on fourth avenue you folks yeah Mm -hmm. yeah High dive. I mean, I've been a long time fan of high dive. I love dive bars. It's you know fun, fun thing I like to do. Um, I mean, the grill, good food, great cocktails, all the vibes. DJ live bands. I'm like, yeah, do it. You know, so, <laughs> vibe. Love the grill. Um, man, dirty precious, great cocktails. Yes. Great owners, you know, bad, bad, bad. Can I say? Can I, I'm not swearing, but like badass bitches, you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can edit that one out, but no, the, the, yeah, the video is more, is not necessarily rated for kids per se. So it's okay. <laughs> no, but it's just like a community of really great, you know, business, like woman run businesses in the area. Like we all like know each other. We're all like, you know, support each other. I love that community, you know, um, where else do I like to eat? I mean, I'd be, I'd be eating too. So I'd be eating you, you know. <laughs> a lot um where where, where else we hang out at i mean yeah i mean just love the park slope man um yeah i mean two boots if i'm in a rush (laughs) always two boots if i'm in a rush but also like you know uh wild east is like a little bit more in gowanus but they have they i just love their you know the aesthetic of the you know their whole brewery and like it's dog friendly kid friendly that's a great place to hang out at where else? Man? Yeah, not lost. I mean, you've already given us like an amazing list because a lot of times I was just hoping for like maybe three or four places. You're like, 
this place, this place, this place, this place. Uh -huh. this place. It just goes to show like how many incredible places there are in the area. So it's no wonder you were able to rattle them off that quick. Cause it's just, oh my gosh. Just that many. I to go out. I, I'm one of the girls like, I love cooking, but I love going out to eat more. It's like, the experience. <laughs> I love it. Like, like food with friends in different environments, you know, so. Yeah. So this, this has been so great, Chandra. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. So again, this is Chandra Touch of Whisk and Whiskey located mm -hmm. on 4th Avenue uh, between Carroll and Garfield. You can get there yep. by taking the R train to Union Street and it is just just walk right up there. It is literally like folks is literally just right there. So there's like, yeah. like <laughs> right there. Yeah, Same we have thing. a lot of have a lot of upcoming events so like you know check out our instagram to stay up to date for it and um just we do event we have like live jazz every thursday 7 30 to 9 30 um you know so a lot of, a lot of fun for february stuff i'm doing a cocktail making class next week um we do a lot of like whiskey tastings um also like very briefly i forgot to explain this but um our cocktail program um i try to source more local women-owned minority-owned black-owned businesses like right. so yeah, most of our products are in in that realm. Do you want to give them uh, actually shout out your Instagram handle? I'll pr I'll try to include it somewhere, kind of on yeah, the profile. But shout out to your Instagram I handle so that way people who are watching yeah. elsewhere can know where to follow you at. Of course, yeah. So it's whisk w h i s k and then a n d uh, whiskey with the e. So w h i s k e y b k l i n. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Chandra. And once right. again, I am Nikki Thomas, licensed associate real estate broker with the Corcoran Group. I will catch you again for Shop Talk Park Slope. But again, thank you, Chandra. Yay. All right, folks. See you next Bye, time. Friend. Bye. Bye.